This is the Vet Voice Podcast by Veterans for America First. My name is Jerry Craig. I'm the host of the podcast, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Gerald Malloy, who is running for United States Senate for the state of Vermont. And he is also a Veterans for America First endorsed candidate. So first, I want to congratulate you on winning your primary election, and you're geared up for the general election this November 8th. I want you to tell your voters a little bit about yourself so they can know who they're voting for this November. Sure. Well, thank you, Jerry, and thank you for uh, for uh, for uh, for Veterans for America First. Uh, great, great to be here. I appreciate the support. Uh, yeah. So Gerald Malloy, and I am running for U.S. Senate uh, in Vermont, and that's for Senator Leahy's seat. Uh, Senator Leahy is a announced that he's retiring after 48 years, and he's the only Democrat ever in the state of Vermont. But uh, I guess to start with me, I was born in Boston and oldest of nine. I've had one sibling pass away, but a large family had the great opportunity to go to West Point at 18, uh, played some hockey and baseball at West Point, and then uh, was commissioned as a field artillery officer. Uh, Served 22 years on active duty uh, around the world, Germany in the Fulda Gap, a couple of times uh, in Korea, including near the DMZ, uh, once with the Army, once with the Air Force. Uh, did some training with the Jordanians in the Middle East, uh, did pretty much Desert Shield as a storm to start to finish, and that was coming out of Fort Bragg. I had been a charter member of an MLRS battalion, helped stand that battalion up and led the operations as they went about 400 kilometers and fired 650 MLRS rockets to help uh, liberate Kuwait. Uh, also ended up training about 50,000 reserve component soldiers for different operations, enduring freedom, Iraqi freedom, Bosnia, uh, Operation Noble Eagle. I did work at the Joint Field Office in New York City uh, right after 9-11. And uh, I, I also worked uh, ROTC for about two and a half, three years and, and was part of the leadership team commissioning about a thousand new lieutenants. Uh, then went into work different government positions uh, and with industry for the next five years, working with many uh, government organizations, mostly emergency management, or emergency planning, I actually did pandemic influenza planning in response during the whole H1N1 uh, bird, uh, bird flu incident. Uh, worked with DHS, HHS, state, federal, local law enforcement community, worked about 20 presidential disaster declarations. Uh, then I went into uh, business and industry. So I've been in business development positions for the last uh, about 11 and a half years. I uh, worked, for, worked for a couple of well, several great companies, uh, still working now, although I'm on like part-time, part-time, but um, I worked for Raytheon, I worked for Lockheed Martin. Um, I guess going back, I, I got my initial security clearance. I was in a nuclear surety program uh, in Germany in the full the gap, but that dates back to 85. I still have that clearance now. Um, in, in business development positions, mostly in the Washington DC area. So I consider my full career as service uh, 42 years now. And I'm still working uh, uh, with government and particularly military folks across DOD to provide services uh, with my company and, and grow new business for my company. I think that's very applicable here, especially in Vermont where one of the things that's missing is, is well-paying jobs and growing business in Vermont. Um, uh, so I'm married, four children. I have three children in the Vermont schools right now. I get married a little bit late in, last, in life. So my, my youngest is 13. I have two in college and one in high, uh, high school here in Vermont. And my wife, Stacy is, uh, of course, the love of my life. She's, she's doing everything for this campaign right now. I've got a great campaign team uh, and, and family and really about upwards of 200 volunteers here in Vermont helping. Uh, I decided to run, I started thinking about it the day Senator Leahy made his announcement back in November 20, uh, November of last year, on or about November 15th. I um, had not thought of running for U.S. Senator at that, uh, at that point, but when he announced, I began to think about it, and I did that because I was alarmed at the direction our country uh, was going in, and I actually tell people now that I've gone from could run to should run to have to run to have to win because our country has gone from, in my view, uh, an alarming downward trend uh, last year into crisis, crisis this year. And that's our economy and drugs and border and crime. And of course, we're, there's a war in Europe now. Um, and there are reasons for all of that. And it's, it's the folks that are in charge right now, uh, the Democrat Party, the progressive far left, it's not representing the people. Uh, 
So I, I decided uh, January, February of this year, I did uh, my boots on the ground, uh, starting the campaign and that uh, I've worked very, very hard. And, you know, I've got an army ground game going here and, and it's a small state. There's only about 300 and 300,000 or so actual voters. So I've been everywhere, just about everywhere in the state, all 14 counties have done 18 parades and been in all sorts of, all sorts of events. It's been fantastic, but my platform, uh, which I looked at, I looked at, you know, where, where the current administration is failing and that aligns right up with the Republican party platform, I'm not abiding by the constitution. We need to get back to that, I'm not promoting economic prosperity. We need to get back to that and not ensuring defense security in order. So I have on my website, deploy Malloy, you'll see, I have different, uh, very viable solutions to address all of those uh, uh, failures right now. Uh, here in Vermont, uh, very exciting. You know, as I, as I worked, uh, I will tell you, I was an underdog uh, in the primary, <coughs> and my my ground game won the primary for me. And uh, uh, the response continues to grow every day. Primary was August 9th. and since then, uh, some some good things, some great things have happened. Um, I have had a a debate with my opponent. Uh, one of the things I had looked at uh, back in making my decision, Senator Leahy, as I might have mentioned, is the only U.S. Senator ever. Uh, before him in 1974, 100 years of Republicans straight in Vermont. So it's not, it's not a crazy idea to be a Republican here in Vermont. There's still that base of uh, Republicans here in the state. It's just a matter of getting them energized and, and getting them out to vote. Uh, I also looked at my opponents and who I thought would be my opponent is my opponent. Vermont has one uh, representative, his name is Peter Welch, and he's been a, uh, the representative here for 16 years, far left uh, Democrat, and he is not representing uh, the state, uh, all of the state. He is representing a, a small part of the state. And I've also looked at his performance, and there are some uh, issues uh, that many Vermonters bring up to me every single day. And so between all those things, I think I have a, a great chance here. And so I will tell you recently, I had a debate with him that went very well. And the day after that debate, Trafalgar issued a, a poll where, and showed me as uh, six and a half points behind, 49-43. Uh, for, for me, Republican in this state, in this race, going up against that opponent is actually fantastic. And I'm, I'm very encouraged by it. That was a good three weeks ago. That has enabled me to gain more steam. Uh, I've been on Bannon, Breitbart, David Webb, Howie Carr. I was on Steve Hilton uh, just this past Sunday night, nationwide. Uh, I've been on all the radio stations, TV stations here in the state. Not all, but I mean, quite a few. And uh, we're growing and it's, uh, it's a ground game and it can be done. And uh, Vermonters, I, I have done my own, not scientific, but just going and, and engaging Vermonters. I think I'm up right up about 15,000 folks that I've talked to. 85% of those are not happy with the direction of the, of the country. And that's, you know, that's me standing in front of a supermarket and 85, you know, meeting 100 people and 85 are not happy. And there's 15 that are happy or think things are fine. But um, it's, you know, it's, that's very encouraging to me. And so we're going to continue with that approach. Uh, I just was on an hour show last night uh, for uh, on a cable station up in St. Albans. I just this morning, I spent about 45 minutes on a on the major radio station here in Burlington, up a couple hours north of me. I'm down in Windsor County, which is the birthplace of Vermont. And uh, you know, I, I will tell you, I mentioned born in Boston, so Vermonters like to, and they're proud of their heritage. So I do get asked, you know, what what generation Vermonter are you? And I'm not 11th generation, which I've met, but um, but I am a New Englander, and I have uh, even at the bottom of my driveway. So the Veterans of America folks will uh, will be interested in this. Bottom of my driveway is one of two original Crown Point military road markers, 1759. That road was. Uh, the security for that road was provided by Robert Rogers, a Robert Rogers uh, Rangers fame, him, and a, a young captain named John Stark uh, from New Hampshire, who uh, went on to be the hero of the Battle of Bennington, the original turning point of the uh, Revolutionary War, and the gentleman that said, live free or die. So a lot of history here, and I'm proud of that, proud to be a Vermonter. Uh, this race is a very exciting. 
And really, it's, it's about saving Vermont and saving America. We're going in the wrong direction. And Vermonters realize that the, the inflation has been caused by massive, reckless, misguided overspending. Uh, the crime has been ca caused by efforts, you know, initiatives to defund the police and the progressive uh, prosecutor movement. The drugs are pouring in through our southern border because we have no, it's not secure. And I can tell you, having worked with DHS and 15 years ago, it wasn't secure. And so that, we, th that needs to be fixed. And I am in favor of actually putting up a wall, not because I'm against immigration, but because of the drugs and the, and the human trafficking that is going on there. So um, a couple of those, a couple of my, my ideas, I do look to have uh, fiscal responsibility. I do look to bring discipline back in. I look to bring uh, Republican values back in and back to abiding by the Constitution. Uh, you know, flash forward to where we have a president here, uh, unilaterally decided he's going to spend a trillion dollars, uh, approximately of, of taxpayer money to pay out someone else's loan. Uh, you know, we do have a Constitution and uh, separation of powers. And, and that's Congress's job to actually decide how to spend money, not the president. So we have, we have quite a few issues. Vermonters see that, and I'm excited by this race. Uh, and, and I'm proud to be a Vermonter and may the 14 stars shine bright and may God bless America. Well, I think that what you, your platform as you shared is it's basic common sense. And as I've interviewed many candidates, I'm finding that the democratic historical voters are left in a vacuum with no one to vote for because the Democrats have gone so extreme far to the left that they're abandoned. And they are resonating with the idea of common sense functionality and with inflation and energy costs the way they are, they're left to see it right in, right in front of them, the, the impact of the current administration. So Veterans for America First, we are so proud to endorse you and to support your campaign. We need you to get on the Senate floor and, and tell people how it should be and that, that we should have a functional government. So the people of Vermont, if they wanted to find out more information about you or to volunteer for your organization or to make donations, how could they go about doing that? And where would they find that information? Right on my website, which is uh, www.deploymaloy, D-E-P, L O Y M A L L O Y dot com, all one word, deploymaloy.com. And you can find out a ton of information about me uh, and, and the, the ability to volunteer or, or to donate. And the donating is, is coming along, which is very exciting. And I appreciate it greatly. Any, any donation, $5, $10, $100, $500, whatever it is, is, is huge. And it goes a long way here in Vermont. And, and Jerry, you're, you're right. The, um, you know, I, uh, day one, the administration trying to kill the oil and gas industry. That is the reason we have high uh, oil and gas prices. Now we had independence and I, I look to have uh, gain or regain independence for the United States across current energy, future energy, uh, critical technology and, and food. And uh, that's also resonating with, with Vermonters. Well, I hope to have you on after you win as a celebration of your Senate race. And I don't want to lose touch with you because we're still here supporting you, even when you're in office, for what you need to keep the good word out and to keep promoting America First agenda principles and to save America. So thank you for stepping up, running for office, and I look to have you back in the near future. Thank you, Jerry. I, you know, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna conduct myself with the values I learned at West Point, duty, honor, and country, and. And uh, I am the right candidate to actually deliver a better future. Vermonters are worried about the future. I don't like the future I see for my children here, but uh, I'm going to deliver a better future for Vermont. Well, God bless America. God bless America. Thank you, Jerry.